Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your favorite new series here on the Gotham Chess YouTube channel, Noob Arena. In Noob Arena, I take some of my Twitch subscribers and I pair them against each other to play out a famous chess game. Today's famous chess game is none other than the Hikaru Nakamura Immortal, the best game that Hikaru ever played. I actually have a video on this game called When Hikaru Sacrificed His Queen Six Times. So today we had three pairings. The first one was roughly 500 rated, then we had a roughly 1200 rated matchup, and then a roughly 1700 rated matchup to finish things off. First thing that I'm going to do is show you the entire game. After that, you're going to watch how all the other players handle the position. All right, without further ado, let's check out Boris Gelfin versus Hikaru Nakamura from 2010. So we're gonna watch these games from Black's perspective because it's Hikaru playing, right? And it's his immortal, really. So uh, we really should be watching it uh, with the color that he played. Now, this is the, gonna be the starting position. It's going to be Black to move. As you can see, Black has expanded over here in typical King's Indian fashion. And there is going to be some various attacking possibilities with the G and H pawns. White needs to deal with this over here in the right manner, but also contemplate the existence of two very important pawn breaks. B6 is very important because it gets to the base of the queen side, which is very important in King's Indian typical counterplay style with white. And D6 is very important because it clears out the D5 square for the knight. You're going to see that motif throughout. And also the knight can get into D6, which means the bishop can get into C4 and the position starts flowing like water. Now, uh, I had some feedback in episode two to show the whole game prior to that. No problem. It was a King's Indian defense. Uh, bishop e2, e5, very orthodox variation. Here, nowadays, b4 is the bayonet attack. This is, I think, considered the most critical test. And basically, uh, white just wants to play c5. Like, black wants to play knight e8, f5, and white wants to play c5 and just get to black and get this moving before black is successfully able to play this f5 move. Now, Another thing that you're going to realize throughout um, throughout these games is that the, the light squared bishop for black is actually extremely important in the King's Indian. You'll notice that in the starting position, it still hasn't moved, yet it serves a very, very, very important purpose. If this bishop was not here, it would be much harder to attack because white has very good control of the light squares on the king side. So that CA bishop is a, is a beast, and these knights oftentimes would love to swap off for that bishop. Um... I have a neighbor who lets their tiny dog out and it just barks the entire morning. I know you can't hear it. I'm not saying you can hear it. I can hear it and I've been hearing it for an hour. You would think that the neighbor over like the years that they've lived in that house would just stop letting their dog stand on the balcony. Dog's like 10 pounds, just barks at everything that moves. So frustrating. Anyway, rant over. So the game proceeded with both sides clashing, right? Black getting to the king, white getting on the queen side. And Hikaru uh, did a very nice job of balancing the counterplay of like preventing Gelfand's counterplay with also doing very typical King's Indian stuff. Like these knights would either come in like this or rotate backwards and give access to the queen to go to h4. And another very common idea is that if white ever plays something like h3, it just doesn't work because this pawn structure prevents mobility and sacrifices begin opening up. And there's really just no way to prevent like a devastating attack. You have like knight h4, for example, the space advantage is really bad uh, for white. So throughout the game, you see kind of, uh, you know, you see Gelfand kind of moving backwards and trying to defend himself. Hikaru uh, ultimately ends up crashing through with knight takes g2, a beautiful move. It's, it's the only thing that the king is protecting over there. Um, sorry, it's the, it's the uh, square only protected by the king. And then this was, uh, this was Hikaru sacrificing his queen six times. The first one was like this. Not only does he sacrifice his queen, he can also get a queen and be down 11 points of material, but g2 is a pawn mate. Uh, and then, you know, uh, what he did was he checked and threatened mate like this, and then here he sacrificed his queen again with queen d3. The queen was hanging the whole time, but he was giving checks and threatening mate. Now if you take this, that's mate. If you take this, that, and that is mate. And uh, yeah, Hikaru just left his queen hanging. I mean, he just left it hanging the whole time because then this is mate. And then if here, you take the knight. So Hikaru sacrificed his queen a bajillion times and ended the game uh, in this position where he is just up a knight and white has absolutely no play and for that reason Boris Gelfin resigned. Uh, do I expect the lower rated players to play the game like this? No. 
<laughs> do I expect the lower rated players uh, to at least, you know, get G4 on the board and maybe G3 and Knight H4 and whatnot? We about to find out. And now that you know how to play the position, let's see if the other players knew how to play the position. All right, there it is. Bishop D7 on the board. All right, so in King's Indian positions, this is what white wants. And this is what black wants, okay? Um... Bishop d7 is uh, actually that light squared bishop is the prized possession, all right, of the of the position. Uh, it's uh, because it, it it escorts a lot of these pawns. D6 is a very interesting move. Um, we could watch it from Hikaru's perspective. We could watch it if you want to watch it from Hikaru's perspective. If we want to watch it with black, sure. Um, all right, C takes d6. Knight takes d6. Uh-oh. That's actually brilliant. I don't, know if, I don't know if white realizes just how brilliant that move is. Because, because, there's, because there's a Zwischenzug! Zwischenzug! Oh my. Zwischenzug, you can do this. But, Zwi oh my goodness, Zwischenzug on the board. Accidental genius from the 600 rated player with black. Amazing. The person playing black, all their ratings combined are 1,500. They're like 500 blitz, 600, uh, 500 rapid, 600 blitz, and like 200-something bullet or 300-something bullet. Amazing. All right, now the knight is still there. All right, it's pretty pog. Uh, I, can't, I can't give too much detailed commentary. All right, so now, now black is actually winning the game because black has more material. Uh, but black is only really winning the game because this can break through. And if black does not know that, then... Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. All right, I don't know. It's about to be the wild, wild west out here. Uh, are they not watching my stream and making the moves? No, absolutely not. I mean, it's very obvious if someone's cheating. So, no. No. Um, I think white, you know, white will probably go here because this is like a very easy thing to see. I mean, just don't do this right away. Look, I see. Now, black might not like that very much, uh, but again, a lot of lower rated players are very trigger happy. They like to take pieces immediately. Like for example, they, you know. Um, uh, and, I, and I think if white trades off knight and bishop for knight and bishop, the weak king for black is gonna be a serious problem. Like for example, if white gets a queen here and puts the rooks on the D and the C file, uh, that's gonna be a serious problem for black because this king is very weak. It's very difficult to defend a weak king, all right? Um, okay, takes, takes. See, it's kind of happening. Um, folks, friendly reminder, you do not want to watch... You... Okay, I don't know what... What is... I'm very scared. What? What? That was... What? Okay, so first of all, here, but second of all, just here. I... You got two problems, two birds, one stone. What? The, that was so unnecessary. What, why did you, it was just queen take, oh my goodness, okay. Well, now white just won a piece <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> um, okay, um, again, you advanced all these pawns for a reason. Like you gotta get moving. All right, I don't know if you're stream sniping, but, uh, but, you know, if you, it, I'm kind of hoping you are stream sniping at this point so you can make it a fair fight. You got to just go G4 now. G4 if you're stream sniping, all right? Like, I mean, you just got to do it. This is also not a bad, okay, that's a move, I guess. Um, you should probably go here. The good thing is the white king has no moves. And again, you should not trade. Like, if you could go rook D4 with the intention of getting a pass pawn. That's another idea. Get a pass pawn, block everything with B6, and then, you know, but you don't want to swap too many pieces. By the way, you notice root d4 is the best move. Top engine move. Um, but a lot of people here would take because they don't want to... Okay, that's also not a bad move. Um, they're definitely watching the stream when they play. N not one of them has made a move that I told them to play. So I, I don't know why you're just immediately accusing these poor volunteers of cheating. But okay. Um... Are you projecting? Are you projecting because you would cheat? Yeah, again, like this has to happen. And you can even hide your king here. The king is very safe over there. But black cannot fight where white is stronger. You have to fight where you are stronger. And right now, you're not stronger in a lot of places on this board. 
All right, so you, you got you got to start, you know. Okay, so the problem is that there's this now. So you 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 went you Yo, that is so lucky that that like doesn't blunder anything. Now you got to take. Like you okay. I'm getting scared though cuz uh once black starts activating some pieces here, uh white might do something catastrophic. So B6. Okay. I feel like white will take. There's no harm in taking. Queen c5 is not a bad move. It attacks the bishop. The problem is, again, you haven't found a way to get to this king. All right? You have not found... Okay. Rook d is a good move. Yeah. Rook d is a strong move. King g7 force now. Why did white just hang... Did white mouse slip? Did what just happened? Was that a slip or just a full blunder of a? It's about to get bad to worse. I don't know if that was a mouse slip. I have no idea. I. I mean, the knight is hanging. The knight is just hang. You know, you gotta go king g seven, guard the knight. Yep, good move. The knight has been protected, yep. Now, 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 right, but now white is winning, apparently. Oh my god, white just gotta give checks now. Give a check. Ten seconds, just give a check. I mean, you just gotta move. You got seven seconds. There you go. All right, here, here, uh, queen h8. Oh my goodness, queen, oh my, oh my. They have bonus time. They have bonus time. No one's gonna lose. Just make a move. Don't flag. Are you crazy? What are you doing? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, king f7 loses the queen. That's the only move, right? That's the only move. There's no other move. King f... Oh my, this is unbelievable. Black has lost the queen. That is... Take the queen. Take the queen. Take the... Take the... Oh my. Oh, repeat. Oh, it's... It, 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 oh, oh my. Oh my. Oh, okay. Okay. Now it's queen versus... Oh, this game is not over, guys. <laughs> The, oh, I thought he was going to take the other pawn. Is this a defensive fortress, guys? I think this is just a... I don't think there's any way White can win this. I, guys, I, I think this might just be a draw. I, I don't know. Now, of course, to actually win this with White, you need to, like, get at least one of the pawns. Like, check, and then here, you know, queen d5. and But, but it's not... Oh, 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 there you go. I think White's going to win now. White's in the driver's seat. There we go. Snap the pawns off. Our, uh, good, good, good. Nice. And now White just has to make... A queenie, and white's just gonna win. Just take. All right, white. Okay, now you can't push anything. Oh boy. All right, three seconds. I have. A, if white loses on time, I'm gonna be so mad. There, there it is. White has realized that they can push the pawn. Black is down to six seconds. What a battle! What a battle here between these absolute gladiators, bravely stepping into the arena. White pushing the pawn confidently. White can push the pawn twice. That's almost stalemate. Oh my gosh, that would have been insane. Is he gonna win the pawn? Just to. Br I, is he gonna stalemate? Oh, they're, they're, he's so lucky there's no stalemate. That's it. There it is. Boom. Up. Oh, Up. Oh. All right, now you, you get like a million mates. There we go. A tense victory ultimately decided by the player with the white pieces. Um, yeah, so obviously that is not how the game went. Um, uh, we, we talked about how the game went in the intro of the YouTube video. We will talk about how the game went on Twitch after all the games are done. Uh, yeah, white actually crashed through in the middle, uh, but black hit them with this nice tactic. And here, the, I mean, basically, rook d8 was obviously just a clean blunder. The way that this position would have been ultimately decided by black is um, like you would have played something like bishop d4, rook d1 attacking, right? And then you can either try to continue the attack over here or you slowly but surely have to kind of defend your king from any danger and, uh, and then rotate your pieces to the queen side because you just have more pieces. You have four pieces playing versus three. But obviously that's not, that's not what happened in the... Uh, you know, in the, in, in the actual uh, game between Hikaru and Gelfand, and here, 
black lost a full piece uh, and did not recapture. And then white just went insane. And then here, for some reason, instead of following the yellow brick road and always looking for checks, black uh, just went bananas. And uh, well, white went bananas right back and black went, everybody went bananas and uh, you know, everybody lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the lowest rated folks were obviously super nervous. The game was absolutely crazy, unpredictable, there was all sorts of blunders. But, as we move up the rating ladder, the 1200s actually began the game almost the exact right way it was supposed to be played. Let's see how they did. Alright, so G4 played in this game between the 1200s. Obviously, y'all you, you, don't want to look up the game, okay? Y'all don't want to look up the game. All right, so at this point, you want to mute the stream. You want to mute the stream. You want to don't, don't, look, don't look the game up. You're on your own. One of you is Boris Gelfand. One of you is Hikaru Nakamura. One of you challenged for the world championship match once. All right, one of you is the most successful chess streamer of all time. All right, so how does black continue? H4, knight H4, bishop H6, rook G7. It's such a fluid attack. H4 played, all right? Trying to play H3. How is white going to deal with this? Is white going to play B6? All right, is white gonna try to pick up this pawn and allow h3? That looks very scary. The softer your pawns are, the harder they are to defend, right? So what is white gonna do here? All right, and the engine says stuff because the engine sees the way to stop the attack, all right? Um, D6, all right, it's taking a page out of the last person's book. D6 is trying to strike down the middle. Now, it's not checkers. The reason that the last person got a really bad position is because they took. There's no, you don't need to take that. You can let them take you, right? Black can just continue the attack. Now, what black doesn't always want to do is allow a full blockade because at that point, when you allow white to blockade like that, you have to rely on sacrifices. All right, you have to rely on sacrificing material to push your pawns through. Um, if I was, okay, GF played, I would have gone H3. I don't understand why this is better. And now maybe H3. But what about what? But I mean, I would have just, I would have just kept going, right? I thought that was the whole point. Oh my goodness, what? This is no, wrong way. <laughs> You've, because okay, all right. Um, all right, we're still, you know, we're we're still. Life is good. Okay, that also isn't the best move. There's a very famous uh, maneuver in the King's Indian defense to play like this to get the knight there to pressure those squares, but also there's like this move, for example, which might pressure that too. Oh, this is scary. I love how the best move by the engine is to go back. Like, my bad, that was stupid. All right, 98, very logical move. I don't know how, wh I don't know how white's gonna defend this pawn. Good move. Yeah, that's a problem. You might have to just go back. That's a great move, realizing that that square is no longer covered. Great move by white. Wow. So you, you might just have to retreat. Now, if, 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 if white tries to just swap everything, it's going to be a problem because there's no way to get this through. You cannot play d7. If you play d7, just bishop takes. Right, so you play queen f3 and oh, no, 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 no. That was the whole idea. That was the whole idea. Oh my goodness, the pawn has fallen. I love how white is still better. I don't understand why white is still better. White is still better because I guess there's targets. Because again, in the King's Indian, the whole attack is supposed to happen here. If white stops that, white has a space advantage usually on the center and the queen side. That's how the King's Indian works. So right now, black's main weapon in the King's Indian defense has been stopped. And that is why Stockfish... Okay. Oh, this is very interesting. I mean, Stockfish hates it, but... Oh, but the same piece can move now. Oh, they miss it. But if they go here, they're going to lose that. Yeah, they shouldn't have taken they should have done it the other way. They should have applied the pressure to that, that piece. Oh, man. White has totally malfunctioned here. Black is now totally winning. Yikes. That bishop on g4 was such a good plug. Oh, this is, yeah, this is tough. I mean, white's just, I mean, no, it's not, oh. Ah, this is convincing. Convincing win by black now. Oh. Tough. That was actually, I mean, white played very well. But don't resign. Never resign. Why resign? Go here. If you trade queens here, you're crazy. Good. Queen g3 here is strong by black. Queen g3 is very nice. 
Because it, uh, it gets very close to the king. You threaten this. You defend your knight. You threaten a queen trade. Queen g3. I would, I would probably play queen g3. Um, I think it solves a lot. All right. What is black going to do? Knight f8. All right. Rook c1 is interesting here. Rook c1 is... It's definitely a move. Of course, black could go here, which is kind of a bummer. I mean, when you play against the, someone who has so many pieces, somehow everything guards everything else. So it's very difficult to create play. Again, by the way, King's Indian. Oh, now they play queen there. Yeah, that's a tough one. All right. Here, don't trade queens. Oh, that's... Now your king has no breathing room. That's not a bad move, actually. All right, now rook c3, obviously, defended by the bishop. Protecting the pawn. <laughs> I'm just... Listen, I'm, I'm testing for stream sniping, okay? I gotta do it, all right? It's my job. Wait, why did you go here but not take? Okay, whatever. Anyway, rook c4. Okay. You gotta take. Yeah, black also has a big time advantage. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure black is going to... I think black is going to convert this one. Yeah, black's just very clean. White down to 20 seconds. Uh, easiest... Oh, that's... Yeah, wow. Good awareness by black. I mean, no hesitation. Look at that. Very methodical here. Just trade, getting every pawn off the board. Very nice technique. Put the rook behind the pawn and just start pushing, right? Get all the pieces together. You can even go here. Check. Okay. Let's see this convert. Yeah. Yeah. Bring the knight at some point because a knight near a king and a rook like this is going to be problems. Yeah, you could just push the pawn all the way. Rook is going to have to be stuck defending it. And the white king can't even get closer because uh, you're just going to give a check. So if like here, here, yeah, like just go b2. Yeah, and now you always have a check. You can go here. That's not good. That, no. Yeah, now, now, very nice. But you should have done it when the king was further. Yeah, now you trade everything. Very good technique. And let's just not, not, if, if this is actually shockingly close because if white, oh, white resigns. Oh. 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 Why, you should have made him, you know, should have made him uh, make a queen. You, you never know. Uh, this game was very close. Black played a horrible move here. Black played a very bad move, got very scared of this. Black should have just kept attacking. That's the whole point of the King's Indian, right? But instead of that, Black rotated their pieces, and White actually got a really nice bind here. Um, but then just lost the pawn. It just went crazy. Uh, as it turns out, apparently you can even play d7. And after this, this whole blockade in the middle is really strong for White. Um, but... Uh, yeah, but then you, you didn't do that. You, you, you lost the thread, and then you, you tried to sacrifice. But even here, if you played rook d1, you would have been okay, I think. I mean, black still has to find very tough moves to defend. But when you did this, this move, you should be very careful when you trade pieces in chess that only improve your opponent's position. And this is the kind of move that does that. You just lose an active piece for no reason. And then your opponent immediately takes over the initiative. So... Um, but I mean, that's, that's life. That's chess. That's life. And last but not least, it's time for our most advanced individuals. Let's see how they fared in episode three of New Arena. All right, 1700s. We'll play the last game. <laughs> that was so weird today. Hold on. Let me turn on the AC. All right. It's hot in the room. We got G4 on the board. Oh, oh. This is already different than the other games. G4 takes takes. This is apparently the only way forward now. Okay, we're awaiting a move here from white. D6. Very logical move. Very logical. Again, we've seen this in every game today, I think. One of the games went take, take, take. 
One of the games went rook d7 and then black won this pawn. So very interesting to see what's going to happen in this game. Bishop f8. All right, so now if this, it's the same trap as the 500 fell for. So I hope... I hope... White does not fall for the same trap. The, the top engine move is this, which is just completely ridiculous. The whole point is that after this, there's bishop c... That's... All right, white is thinking. White is thinking, unsure of what to do. Having a little thought here. Tough position, obviously. Again, white should not be too worried about losing this pawn. King h1 played. So black is gonna... What? I thought the whole point of this was to... Now white actually can go here. Oh my god, what is this? B... B what is bishop takes a7? What? That was so weird. Why was just losing the bishop on a7 the top computer move? All right, you can take e4. You can take d5. d5 has been taken and now white is better. White is better because black lost the defender of the pawn. Oh my. That was everything that... Wait, what is white thinking about here? White's got to go. Don't go here. Because then this. Okay. But, but now there's this. White's lost that pawn. And white also lost the... I mean... Sorry. Wow. Okay. Sorry, black lost the pawn. Now, now black is losing the kingside attacking pawns. And black is losing the light squared bishop. Which, as I've mentioned, is the most important piece in the King's Indian attack. Takes. Oh, black has to go here, because if you take that, there's this. And now, I mean, now white has good control of the light squares. Okay, that is not the best move. Now, what does black do here? Zoom, zoom. Here, 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 here. I mean, just start firing at all cylinders. You gotta just use your pawn barrier and then just defend d6 successfully. Uh, because white is not going to play these top engine moves. And white is immediately worse. Immediately worse. This is never happening in a million years. White is going to play rook e1, which is very natural. All these moves are very natural. a6, b6. These are the moves that white is going to play. Um, black has a very simple game plan. Bishop b7, king g7, rook h8. Those are black's next three moves pending, you know, something. Rook f3. Uh-oh. 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 Obviously, there's this, but... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And black has a monster time advantage as well. Wow. Okay, that's also a very good move. Now, just be careful. You never want to gallop in like this. Nice. Queen should go here now. That's what you should do. Is there also rook g1 here? To, like, get there. There's literally just a mate lurking in this position. Uh, yeah, Cormac's playing a, a bit too slowly. Oh my. Oh, that is a trappy move. You could play, like, Queen f5 here. Queen f5 is a very good move for black. Because after you trade queens, you just have a very easily winning endgame. This is also natural. All right. Black thinking of the best way forward. Taking a long, nice think here. Rook g4. All right. White's got to just play a move. White's got to... Yes. All right. Now knight, g, now knight g2 actually does have some logic behind it. I like how people in chat just absolutely do not understand my sarcasm. They're just like, that loses material. All right, there's no mate. There was mate. <laughs> wow. Can we just like quickly analyze this game? This game was crazy. So first of all, the players did play g4, which was right. Now white should not take. White should not take. White should do what they, you know, what Boris Gelfin did, which was play b6. But in the game, 
Um, all right, let's just let, let's let's analyze on the live board. Uh, in the game, you know, Black played d6, and then there was this kind of bind here. King h1, I think, is also unnecessary because you're not you're not trying to move this pawn. I would say. But again, the top engine move here is knight to e3, which is unfindable for a human being. Uh, and the point is that if this, there's bishop c4, and you get the rook with an attack, if you don't take the knight, then, like, let's say you play, like, c takes d6, then white goes here anyway, and if you prevent that by playing the move bishop to e6, then white apparently takes the pawn on g4. Oh, yeah, because they're winning the pawn. But then after this, it's just game on. So knight e3 is unfindable completely. Uh, king h1 is played. And then here there was a move. Bishop takes a7. What? What if I take? Oh, then I go here attacking the queen. And if this, there's a fork. And if queen takes queen, rook takes queen, rook takes, there's a fork again. Duh. Yeah. Obviously, that's why you play bishop takes a7. Who didn't see that? Apparently, the best move there is rook h7 just going for an attack and ignoring the bishop. And if the bishop goes back to g1, you play f3. Or you play knight h5 with the idea to get knight g3 smothered mate, which is pretty disgusting. In the game, after knight d5, black accidentally removed the defender of a very important pawn and was much worse. Uh... But, uh... And white was better. But white was better only if white got a blockade on the light squares. That is why this advantage is so big here. So white has a massive advantage if and only if, at some point, white finds knight d2, knight e4. That's it. Literally. If you look at all these engine lines, it's either knight d2 right away, or knight d2 here, or, you know, queen d3, knight d2. But if you never find the, a maneuver to put the knight on the e4 square, you're just never, ever, ever okay. Which is kind of crazy. Like, see, even here, queen e2. Or a6, and then knight d2. Or queen e2, knight d2. Knight d2 right away. You have to go here and here, which is tough. That's very tough. And, uh, well, you didn't find it, and, yeah, black just... Played very well, very nice game. Folks, if you made it this far in the video, I just wanna say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for supporting all of my content. If you have any feedback for the series or if you're just having a great time watching, do let me know in the comments below. Uh, but don't say things like, I hate that, I hate this series and you should stop doing it. Cause I'm absolutely not gonna stop doing it. That, that feedback, that's falling on deaf ears. That's not constructive criticism. That's you going, me don't like your content, so stop making it. That's not. But for the rest of you, if you have constructive feedback, I'm all ears. I'll see you in the next video. Get out of here.